I can give you a 2000 pages book about the entire subject and the questions that will come, you'll never find them on the book. You have to really think, like you have to push your mind hard, really hard. I did my bachelor's in aerospace also from SRM in Cotton Kulatur, like pretty big. And I st- I was looking my master's into automatic control so when I started in Tudor, but right now I'm more more into the human machine systems. Like it is a very new field in aerospace. So yeah, I'm doing that thing. So like I'm studying my thesis now with neurosciences. The domain is human machine systems. And I currently know I'm like working in Rotterdam Medical, Medical College in the neuroscience department for my thesis here. It's kind of like, you know, I was always into controls, but like when I started out here, you, there are some subjects that were introduced to you that was like mostly the human aspect of controls, like how humans behave inside an aircraft. So from that, my thing started with like all the human machine systems and yeah, but I don't know, like I'm doing my thesis in medicine, so it's kind of <laughs> full into human. I had some admits from UK also, but if you see the overall education system in UK, they were like filling up their system with like literally like they they got they gave everyone an admit who applied for university so that pretty much tells their level right now and yeah i had admit from like purdue also so purdue was kind of my first choice but all this covid thing played and netherlands was like much safer option back then and like tudor and purdue they're both like good universities in the top 10 so i mean yeah that's why i came to netherlands also <laughs> So if you study in a you know, top university, you always have to struggle a bit. So the thing I struggled here was like, they're at least, you know, like 10 years ahead of us. So their bachelors, they're groomed for their masters. It's not, it, it's, it's, it's not something you do in India. So like you need to catch up to these people. And it's an unfair competition to be very honest against these Dutch students, but it is something you have to do anyway. You start with the basics of control systems like control theory and then automatic flight controls and system theory. That's the basics of control th- systems. And after like, because in Netherlands, the education system is quarter based, not semester based. So you do four quarters in a year and a fifth quarter. There's the summer break for research and for other projects and internships. So at this, at this start, you study like basic subjects like control theory, systems theory, and like some operations courses and aircraft controls from and second quarter also the same thing like the basic system and control stuff from third quarter you start to diverge by taking electives to the domain you want to go like inside controls so for me i went to like human machine systems so like there is a course like practical which is called advanced human machine systems and then simulated programming and real-time programming and everything if you see like people coming from outside like in, in my faculty, in my departments, everyone is like aerospace, but some people are from electrical background because it also relates like control system electrical. Some people are from mechanical also, but that's the only background I can find like electrical or mechanical at max. It's purely regarding the systems that works in airplane, but I mean, if someone wants to become a pilot, they can also study aerospace engineering, you know, like some of my friends, like they're already in training with the Dutch Air Force. Like I know some people who studied this course and they're already in the training. so. I mean, it will help you clear your pilot exams, obviously. (laughs) Being a tutorial student, like you can just put your resume in any company in Europe and you'll get a chance at the interview, you know, like you're always ahead of everyone. But like there are some focus companies, if you want to say like they're like from control and simulation, it's always like Airbus is there, like they're a big employer, like people do their internships there, so they get a job Uh, and the faculty has good relationship with, with also like Mercedes-Benz, Daimler and some other shipping companies for control systems. Yeah, that's something. And it's always like a lot of companies just like can just keep on going, you know. My IELTS was 7.5. My GRE was 160-148. And my GPA was like, it, it was like I graduated 8.68, but like I was really lucky, like the semesters I applied for here, I was really lucky because I was like, like constantly like top four in the class and I got a scholarship and all these things, it helped a little bit, you know. If you solely look into my department, the, the year I got into, I was the only Indian guy in control and simulation. So it was kind of a pretty much yeah, alone thing, but I mean, people here are quite open, but I will say like they're Indian organizations, also student organizations, they are solely Indian here. so. 
I mean, you'll always find someone. You know, the stores are always here. <laughs> Thing, you know, you don't speak Dutch in Netherlands. You speak English mostly. So English is the kind of the main language that you don't you won't face any problem speaking English. The companies are also always fine. Like if you're English speaking guy, they're always fine with that. Unless and until like it's some marketing company, that's a really barrier if you want to do some marketing stuff in that language. But other than that, language is not a big deal here. I mean, everyone will speak English like anywhere you go in Netherlands. The course fees is like for my year it was eighteen thousand seven fifty euros. Uh, for uh, they gave us a rebate of three months because it was pandemic. If if you if you can cannot complete your So, for example, if I cannot complete my degree within August 2022 because there's 2020 in tech, I'll get a three months rebate. That is on the standard European fee. So it's like 2,000 euros per year. So like some tiny bits per month. But yeah, that's the course fees. And there are two kinds of scholarship. The one is called the Holland scholarship. You get a 5,000 per year kind of scholarship. And the other is called the Justice Van. So Justice Van pays for your entire tuition fees and for your entire living fees. But for justice, when there are some clauses that you have to maintain with the marks and also with the how many ECTS or credit you get per year. So if you are a if if you're an international student with like no scholarship, you have to get 30 ECTS per year. But if you're a justice, when you have to get 45 ECTS per year with some marks also criteria. I really don't doubt the marks criteria. The only thing that I really feel like. It's something that it keeps pushing you in tutor. It's like you'll never find the answers in the book. So I can give you a two thousand pages book about the entire subject and the questions that will come. You'll never find them on the. You have to really think. Like you have to push your mind hard, really hard. <laughs>